I missed 4 streaming releases since 1.33 and we got so many crazy new features that are not chatbot Jenny AI related, it, it would be a shame to not talk about them. Do you want to know everything about this small group of penguins? Whether you are using Plotly, Altair or Vegalite, child user selections are now sent back into Python variables when onSelect is enabled. Access the selected data from the points key or filter the input dataset by the points in this list. Speaking of Penguin's data frames, user selections are also available on Streamly data frames. Select the rows and columns of Adelie Penguins you are interested in, then analyze the subset of the data returned by the function call. Mm, judging by the GitHub issue, reacting to zooming and panning on charts and maps is planned, as well as image selections and click events, so stay tuned by subscribing to this channel. Now if you run a function in which you can select a penguin on a plotly map to update a data frame display, the whole Streamlit app will rerun from top to bottom for any user selection, even if you only wanted the data frame to update. Fear not, the new fragment decorator breaks the rerun for you. Decorate the function with ST experimental fragments and now any user interaction from inside the function will only rerun that function. This is loop breaking. You can compose smaller streamed apps as function fragments, stack them one by one in a script, then let them communicate through session states. Do you know of a streamed window where any interaction would update the form without rerunning the full app until you press a submit button? This sounds like a fragment embedded in a dialog window widget. Decorate a function with ST experimental dialog and the fragment will display inside a dialog window, with any user interaction only rerunning the window. Only a ST rerun call could rerun the whole app and hide this dialog window. I'm in an Adelie penguin mood. I mean, I mean, look at them. They're so cute. Also, why is that video 4 hours long? Well, this is because you can now autoplay a movie with ST video and the new loop argument makes you watch that video of a penguin forever. If your app doesn't have enough penguins, you can add a penguin logo to the top left of your app using the ST logo method. No more CSS shenanigans from Streamit Extras to push a logo over the multi-page navigation menu. And you know what? There has been many changes around multi-page navigation. Remember, to implement your own navigation menu, you had to switch off automatic navigation, then display a set of ST page link to display links to other pages. Oh, here's a random fact about page link, by the way. You can embed any Google material icon through the icon argument by prefixing the name of the icon with material. In fact, this feature is present in any function that supports the icon argument. Anyway, with Streamlit 1.36, Streamlit provides an integrated way to list pages instead of looping on a set of page links. Realda ST page, which defines the label, icon, and URL route for each subpage you want to show. Pass either a Python callable function or the path to a Streamlit script, then call your list of pages into ST navigation in your main file entry point to display the page menu in the sidebar. Your main file entry point now acts as a router where widgets and variables defined inside it are distributed across all pages and you can compute shared states between choosing a page and presenting it. This navigation menu is dynamic. You can add or remove pages at each rerun depending on, for example, the user's login status. Link for a tutorial in the description below. And by the way, Streamlit product management is currently designing native authentication support for Streamlit. You should definitely add any thoughts you have around reading headers, writing cookies, link redirects, and custom HTTP endpoints to this GitHub conversation. Oh, I wasn't done with the navigation menu. If you pass a dictionary of keys to list of pages, your navigation menu gets subgroupings, with each key becoming a header section with the list of pages out of the dictionary value. If you were relying on query parameters to pass information between pages, you don't have to edit each parameter through key notation anymore, as the new query params form dict takes a dictionary as input to overwrite all of those query parameters.
between composing fragments, multi-page routing and query parameters, at this point you're building a medium-sized web app. I might as well embed some HTML in there, like my email list signup form. It's just a big external HTML file then embedded into Streamlit with the new STHTML, which accepts both a string and a path to a file. STHTML doesn't embed the content in an iframe. It is directly integrated into Streamlit HTML. If you are into CSS hacking, it has never been easier to hack Streamlit CSS with STHTML. Go watch my last video about Excel dashboarding for a big demo of CSS manipulation. Wait. I think you don't need HTML anymore to change the font or background color of text. Write your text inside a markdown widget, then surround the word or sentence with brackets prefixed by a color or color background to style your text. Not only that, it also works on any text label like button labels, checkbox label, tab labels or expand the label to name a few. Using columns in your app for horizontal layouts, use the new vertical alignment argument to center widget or align them from their bottom edges. I had a few qualms with misaligned widgets in my Streamlitis Limited video, but with this new vertical alignment and the mean height property of widget being normalized, rows of Streamlit widgets are now pretty to watch. <coughs> Adult penguins are calling me. Hello from the other side. If you use bar chart, line chart, area chart, or scatter chart, you're now able to edit the X and Y axis in your Streamlit code. Bar chart now accepts a horizontal argument to rotate 90 degrees, just like penguin sliding on the ice. <laughs> Look at you. If you're writing a Streamlit custom component to integrate a JavaScript charting library like Chad CN UI, you can let the user pass an unchanged callback natively, which gets called whenever the component sends back a value from a user interaction. If you have a long-running Streamlit app with a large cache, you usually empty it regularly with a time to leave or maximum entries argument. Now, you can clear a specific function's cache programmatically by calling the clear method on this function. This clearing accepts argument and keywords, so you can even clear a very specific set of function calls. Amidst all of those news, a few platforms to deploy Streamlit on made their appearance on my feeds. Replit has a new guide to deploy a Streamlit chatbot on their platform, ST Lite, Streamlit serverless platform from Uichiro, upgraded its internal Streamlit version to 1.36, and Pi Cafe is the latest creation from the Solara team. It's a serverless platform to edit, run, and share in browser Python web apps in Dash, Solara, or Streamlit. Basically, ST Lite or Gradualite, but multi platform. They are currently running a poll to decide which of Shiny for Python, Gradio, or Panel to integrate next. I will definitely keep an eye on this project. Speaking of polls, there is a gigantic Streamlit ecosystem swing on the horizon. So head to the poll and vote. Vote with your heart for Streamy Max Stream Face. What the? And if you missed any previous releases, head to those next videos. I'll see you around. Bye!